Claudia. Hello. Thank you for coming on the podcast, oh, especially good. in this like terrible weather as well. <laughs> Look, it was a trip to get here. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was looking at my phone and I was like, oh, I hope she doesn't cancel. I mean, it would be justifiable mm. if it did because, <laughs> you know, it's raining and stuff. But um, how's your 2020 been or early 2020 so far? Well, it started off with the festival I wanted to go to in Melbourne being cancelled. So right. <laughs> we've kind of been joking about how 2020 has been nothing but bad vibes. <laughs> Damn. Because um, you, I mean, I follow you on Instagram and stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, you were going down, is it in Melbourne? Yeah. Is it? So oh. we're going down to Falls Festival. Yeah. And then at the time, East Gippsland just was starting to, you know, blow up in flames. So then they cancelled Falls. So we had nothing to do in Melbourne. And then was it was it it was pretty close like do you reckon it was a it good call they made it wasn't close or? but the issue with the area the is haze. that it no it's actually just it's a one-way path 20 kilometers inland into right. a forest okay so if there is any kind of danger no one can get out right ah, so it's a one way one way in one way out yeah yeah, and so, if that if that goes, then yeah, you have like what thousands of people just uh, yeah. yeah, good call in the end. <laughs> yeah. So what did you do instead, or what was, what was Plan B? Well, we ended up road tripping around the Great Ocean Road, which is actually really nice, and it was very wholesome. And it was like me and my friend Sophia, and we just drove around all these different coastal towns, seeing all the sights, mm. like just going to the beach. So we kind of made up for it, and we were very lucky to be on the one part of the coast that was like not on fire it's good you make the most of it and it's like absolutely tragic what's happening at the moment yeah. but i mean it's good you in a way like it's so good you able to get something like positive out of it you yeah know? and like sometimes yeah. it works out like you guys yeah probably had some good experiences and memories you know, yeah exactly going to that instead but um maybe take me back or mm. to the viewers listening and stuff yes um about just what you do now how did you get into it to begin with Oof. um yeah like how early did you start you know and a loaded question yeah so i'm a second ac officially uh which means that i'm the second assistant camera on like major film sets so once you have like all the big guys who coming and filling in those roles uh that means i'm like you need at least three people to a camera. You need an operator, a focus puller, or a first AC, and then me, which is, does all the organizing, um, helps build all the gear, is another set of hands, uh, but also has kind of like an admin role sometimes. So uh, they have to know like the nuts and bolts of the camera. Yeah, and, stuff. and so if say, a first AC is asking for a piece of equipment, I know where that is, I have it all organized. So it is very much a technical role, mm. Uh, but it's really enjoyable. Every day is different. You get to go on so many sets. Do you find it a creative at all, or is it very, um, very technical to the point where it's just not mass, but you know what mm. I mean? Is it just? It's very technical. I wouldn't. I don't think I have a creative role at all. However, uh, so the reason I I kind of st- fell into it was I just dropped out of uni after two years of art school and. I was just looking for any way in and I literally just saw this Facebook post that was like, oh, we're looking for three days on this, um, <clears throat> sorry, That's on this uh, ABC show. And yeah. I was like, hello. So you set your hand up. And- yeah. Then through that, I met uh, an amazing DP that I'm still really close with today, Tanya Lambert. Um, and she was just so sweet and so lovely, answered all my questions. And she brought me onto a web series as an attachment in the camera department. And I just immediately like was drawn to that. Like I loved the environment it was in. And I felt like it's a great way to start your career, yeah. to learn all the basics, to understand how these kind of film sets are run. And through all that networking, you also make, you can start build up your own skills on the side. Right. And you know, right now I can support myself in a film job while also doing like my own film passion projects. But well, that's one thing people I think have a general idea of the film industry is, mm. is it, a jo- you know, do you have a job where you're financially like stable or support yourself? Um, are yeah. you, do you find that or was it like rocky to begin with or? It was very rocky. I lived at home. Yeah. <laughs> so, cause Which I. Which is great. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people like say that or make fun of it or whatever, but man, if part of my family in Sydney, yeah. I'll live at home. I count my it blessings. It just makes sense. Yeah. It's a, it was great. Like the fact that I grew up in Sydney already makes so much of a difference. Yeah. 
Uh, and I also started pretty young. I was lucky to kind of get my foot in when I was like 20, I want to say. Yeah. So there was yeah. like none of my friends were doing anything else. Like we're all kind of yeah, at uni. For sure. So I could just kind of bum around yeah, <laughs> until it yeah. kind of started working out. No, absolutely. Like a lot of people, they say, oh, you finished uni or you finished mm. school, you should move out of home. It's mm. like, well, I would if it makes sense. Like yeah. I did because I wanted to come to the city yeah. and get opportunities here. But mm. if your family's in Sydney, if mm -hmm. you're here yourself, mm -hmm. it's, I reckon, I mean, if you, if you love your family and your family yeah. are happy to feel you stay at home, yeah. I'm sure it's like fine, yeah. you know, a few more years, like save up or whatever, like kickstart yes. yourself, you know. Yeah. You can get yeah. home to like a lovely meal or whatever. I mean, you know? being fed was great. Do yeah, miss that. Exactly. That's the biggest thing. The food. Yeah. The food is the biggest thing. I moved out and I think I have like the same meal mm -hmm. like every day. <laughs> like I'll bulk make spaghetti bolognese yep. and that's just my lunch and dinner for yep. like three, four days. And you know, my mom my mom does not like when I tell her that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there's definitely like that double edged sword where it's like, I think most people who want to do this kind of freelance lifestyle, yeah. especially in such a high demand but low job industry, generally the people who can be supported for the first couple of years are usually the ones to make it. So it is like, it's, it's such a privilege to kind of be yeah. able to do that as well. So like I was really yeah. lucky that I was like young, I live in Sydney, mm. like, you know, I could kind of bum around for a couple of months between yeah. jobs until I built up enough contacts to make it more stable. But you already, that's a small pool of people, I feel, that are even able to do that in the first place. Right. So, you, I mean, you had these fortunes on your side mm. and it's kind of the hardest is like the first year or two. For sure. You do... I think people have to wait at least two years for it to become really a full time source of income. Mm. And you, and it does help to have some luck in the draw, like luck of the draw, things in your side. You're saying, yeah, you know, look, right location, and yeah. I mean, if you grew up in the country, you can't really stay harder. at home, while and yeah. your parents supporting you while you're going out to work. I know, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. But um, so you did that, yes. and then I mean, did you have to know the camera gear like beforehand? Because you just put your hand up for the ABC. Yeah. But did you know it or like, were you just like, oh, I'm going to learn on the job? <laughs> I was very lost. I had a very much like deer in a headlights kind of face yeah. for about, I don't know, a month. <laughs> and I have to definitely give a shout out to fellow second AC, Kuali, uh, for putting up with me <laughs> because I, there is so much to learn and I don't think you can actually learn everything, those things in a film school. All like right. it's just... It's not even just the cameras. The cameras are one thing, right? And then it's all the little bits and pieces that go with it. Okay, how do we make this work? Like, if this is broken or if this isn't working, how do we troubleshoot that? that yeah. So it's all those, sorry, it's all those no. little things that really start to like add up and you need a lot of experience and that only comes with time and yeah. also someone that's willing to put in the effort to let you learn that's something that i've realized i guess just working at a rental house is there's so many what if or what happens if this doesn't work questions mm. like it's super easy to, if the light works and it's all dandy mm. and sunflowers and rainbows but yeah. it's actually um like a common thing is we try to research and like look up problems the camera mm -hmm. might have yeah like oh what if it breaks down or what if you know, it's, you know, the, the histogram isn't showing up, like mm. where do you find it in the settings? Mm. Like you have to kind of have all these like what if scenarios in your head, yep. things like, you know, some, I don't know if it's like Murphy's law or something like that, where yeah. it's like, what if this happens? And then, mm. I mean, you go from there. And I feel like that's a lot of what an AC's job is, yes. right? There are just so many problems. <laughs> Cause what, at the end of the day, what you want the DP to, I guess it depends on the level of what you're making, but, mm -hmm. You want the DP to just be concentrating on just the look in his eye or his or her eye of the, Pretty much. Of the set. You don't want them to have to worry too much about the technical, like how to screw in something. Is that correct? That's pretty much it. Like, yeah. it's really funny. Like a, a great example of this is whenever a DP I'm working with, like picks up a case or whatever. And you're just like, no, don't do that. Mm. It's okay. I've got it. 
your delicate hands. That's so interesting. <laughs> because, I mean, if you think about it, we all start from film. Or for me, I started just making my own, like, short films when mm-hmm. I was younger and stuff. So, I mean, you kind of do all the roles, right, at that yeah. stage. Yeah. I mean, the gear the gear isn't as extravagant or big as, like, yeah. a proper film set. But, I mean, yeah. you're setting up your own light, yeah. the camera, tripod, you're directing the actors, yeah. you're doing your own production design, it's just yeah. in your mum's garage, you yeah. know, something like that. Um, so, I mean, we come from that environment. So, then... I mean, I've just experienced this a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. When you kind of upgrade or you get some more crew on and mm-hmm. you're on a set, mm-hmm. I've gone to like set up a C stand and then my, <laughs> my gaffer is like, no, no, don't do that. I'm like, what? Like, yeah. it'll yeah. be faster. He's like, yeah. no, 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 put that down, I'll do it. It's like, um, okay, I'm yeah. just going to go there. And like, no, 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 don't go there. It's like, yeah. well, what? The, like, yeah. okay, I'm going to talk to the actors, but the actors already know what they have to say because we already talked yeah. about it. Now I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm just going to sit here. here. Yeah. And Coffee, just, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, I mean, maybe, yeah, I find that a lot, like, maybe a DPs, like, come from that background, and mm-hmm. so, you know, they're naturally just going to want to do it themselves, right? For sure. I mean, everyone starts somewhere, so it is funny when it's like you live in, like, you have such that circle, and then once you respect someone there at the top of the, the department, then it's like, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that anymore. Have you worked with any um, DPs you admire, or, like, you like their work? A, a lot. Yeah? <laughs> um, I mean... I was ve- I'm very fortunate to have worked with a lot of amazing female DPs. Yeah, uh, great. So I've mentioned Tanya Lambert, yeah. who's just incredible. And like, I just really love her work and I think it's really measured and she's yeah. done, um, she recently did the second unit on The Gloaming. So a lot of the work in The Gloaming, which is a Stan TV show that just came out. Great. Uh, she is it Australian on. based or is it? Yeah, yeah. So it was in Stan Tasmania. Is, yeah, cool. um, And then also another DP that I've, I really admire uh, Bonnie Elliott. She yep. came from a doco background. She just worked on projects she was always really passionate about and that's paid off for her. And she also just has such an eye for things and she's got a very artistic sense of shooting, which mm. I really appreciate. And every single light has so much detail put into it. And I like how much time she takes with shots, even though everyone gets really annoyed at her sometimes. But I'm like, no, she knows what she's doing. She's on it. Uh, but and she'll make like out of nowhere like she made this uh, a dance film by I think the Bangara Dance Company and yeah. that was amazing wow and I don't know or care about dance but I watched that whole thing and yeah it was like great. two hours long yeah lovely I think it was called Spear yeah, yeah Spear was, where was, would we find it if could anyone watch it or is it just you can get it at the afters library yeah I don't know anywhere else. Oh, <laughs> no, just like, no YouTube link? <laughs> Probably not. No, okay. Um, with first and second ACs, mm. do you find, um, are there a lot of, because uh, I don't know the numbers, are there a lot yep. of females in those roles, like at the moment in Australia and stuff? Uh... The only reason why I ask is because, um, I don't know, it's a lot of like, is it a lot of heavy lifting and stuff like that? Like, yes. You ha- I mean, yes. Because, I mean, so many, so many people come into the front, like so many like, guys and stuff and they just talk to me like their backs like broken after like filming for a whole day and like lifting and i'm like man i just served like another f- female ac and she was like smaller than you but she's yeah. doing the same like she had the yeah. same camera set up yeah like, i wonder how she's managing you yeah. know like do you find any i have or? a physiotherapist <laughs> my shoulder's in pain all the time yeah, okay. I love how you... <laughs> my knee hurts help me <laughs> oh man it's definitely gonna take a toll on you but oh, damn. I don't do you think like that... work out at the gym? Do you have like a yeah. gym set up to like yes. help you for your role? I, yeah. I do heaps of cardio. I do heaps yeah. of shoulders because it's like for me, upper body is where I'm weakest. And mm. then when you have like a 20 kilo camera and you have to lift it onto an operator's shoulder, yeah. it's like, <laughs> and oh, you feel man. your back go back. It's not good. That's, I think, personal for everyone. But I don't think that is the reason why there is a gender divide. Right. Like, as soon as I started working, I think it's just an attitude. I always had a can-do attitude. Yeah. I can do this. Yeah. Was that good for my body to just do everything, even if I wasn't actually, like, physically capable? No, but here we are. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, at least from what I've heard, because I've only been in the industry for, you know, less than five years. Yeah, yeah. Before five years ago, it was still actually very male-dominated. Yeah. But there definitely has been a shift, and I think, you know, I haven't really experience much discrimination great sometimes you know you have older men say you know oh hi doll get me that will you and you're like okay but it's not offensive at all it's just different attitudes and i think most 
people who are younger, or at least a little bit aware of it, are generally pretty cool. Uh, but I don't know. I don't have the numbers on me. <laughs> right. You having yourself had um, a experience that you kind of like beside, or you have. Or you... I mean, I think everyone has. has yeah. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, yeah. Though I don't know if I want to start going into detail about. No, no, don't, yeah, yeah, no, please. We don't need to. Um, but I mean, it's just it's it's disappointing to hear that that yeah. happened. And I mean. I'm happy to hear that it's getting less and less. Mm. Um, I mean, I've never seen it happen in any of my, obviously, like, sets of what mm. I've been a part of. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just something that, like, we all have to be aware of. Yeah. Um, I think, to be honest, what's more a thing I've noticed, um, like, rather than, say, like, a direct harassment, right, mm. which we can kind of be like, yes, that's bad. One thing that I wish... Um, same like men in general were more aware of is that even a first AC who's not the head of a department, but they are someone who would directly employ me. Mm. Uh, most people don't really want to consider how their hiring tactics might influence the diversity rates. Right. So just the way they put out the job, like how they are cast. Well, the you job know, if, if you're, part. and I, this goes for any job, yeah. right? you get your buddies in, you get your friends in that you know, mm. that you trust, and that's fine. Mm. But, I mean, most of my friends are female. I think most men's friends are male. Mm. So once you already have the men there yeah. who have been there for ages, and that's been like the circle, and then yeah. they bring in their buddies who are majority male, yeah. and they don't want to engage in like a kind of more critical thinking of going, hmm, is just bringing my friends in like helping the industry. the industry yeah or is my like a political stance just as bad right you know what i mean yeah i guess when i just personally when i like mm. go to cast a film and stuff i'm not really thinking political at all or yeah. anything like that like i mean i'm just thinking of people that i gel with well for sure um, and i do well with so i mean i have a cinematographer and he we started the filmmaking with the wedding company together yeah his name is sherman and because we just have such a, like, we spent the last, like, three, four years together. Yeah. Um, we just, I direct and he DPs and I just love the way I can talk to him. You know, yeah. he understands when I mm. talk about certain lights, references, mm -hmm. and then, you know, and then from there, um, I have, like, a producer, who, a producer lady that she's just amazing at her job. Mm -hmm. um, I just find that, yeah, she, if we found it, would be so off track. Um, then I go over an AC I go to. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's just, like, it's, I'm just thinking whoever does has the right skill set, you know? Like, For sure. And, I mean, it's sad that, like, people out there, and I don't know why, like, people would want to preference, like, a certain gender over another. Like, yeah. it's, it should, it's, that has, not, how, how does that affect anything to yeah. do with, like, the skill level or, yeah. like, what you do, you yeah. know? Like, I think I saw you post on it, and I just watched our Little Women the other day, and then <laughs> I love it so much. Like, yeah. Get a, get a girl wig and that whole cast sure. and just the film was just amazing. Yeah. And I have no idea how she didn't get a... I was like, direct, like I, I was like, you know what? I think if, if this any year, this is a year that, you know, the first woman should get, like, the best Oscar for directing. Yeah. And she didn't even get nominated. It's no. It's like, what? It's, it's funny it's how crazy. you can make movies for best picture, but no one directed it. I know. <laughs> or oh, or even, you know, you can have best picture for a Korean movie, but no one acted in it. I don't. It, it, yeah. I, I see. I. I don't know. I, I don't know how the Oscars even. Um, I think there is a video out there to show you how they critique every role. I don't well, know exactly. Well, at least for the the, the Academy, yeah. which I'm gonna point out, this is definitely an American viewpoint. You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I think America is very different to Australia, and like just the type of the industry already who's there. Like yeah. they already have the the big guns. You mm -hmm. know. And the Academy is still, like, majority over the age of 60 years old, white and male. Yeah, like, the, which, people, the people judging it, right? Yeah, and yeah. I think that's just obviously going to reflect the movies that they look at. It's retired, it, what is it, like, based on, like, retired filmmakers? Is that who the Academy are made out of? Mm. Like, it's, or is it no, just... No, 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 they, they you the can... Critics? No, you can have anyone. It's all industry people. Like, you can have, like, okay. directors in there, you can have producers in there, you can have actors in there, uh... You can have people from like a more technical background, like engineers, 
like of, yeah. of camera things. It's, it's, it's so it's so hard. I don't know because if you if you think about it, like films are the most like almost subjective thing out there. Mm. And I mean, if you make two different films, yeah. how can you put them in the same category? Because I mean, yeah. They're different. Like one's yeah. a period piece, one's a sci-fi. For sure. It's like yeah. they're doing two different things. Yeah. Unless you have a sci-fi and a sci-fi who have the same kind of theme and story, then you can maybe look at it together. Yeah. But like Little Women is doing something different to 1917. You know? Yeah. Like Little Women isn't going to try to do like a one-shot track for the whole movie. No. But that fits for 1917. Yeah. You know? So it's like, which one's better? Well, it's like they're both just as sure. equally amazing. Yeah. They're doing different things. And yeah. I mean, so... Someone has to win, right? When you have an award like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think that necessarily means it's better than nine than yeah. the women. It's just someone has to win, and that means that someone can't like win. You know. Yeah. Um, it's just the way it is. I don't know. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it, though? Do you? you I, I, I guess. Yeah. I think the Oscars are a bit of a sham. Is my general opinion. I guess. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I don't. I don't, I'm not getting into this industry like for Oscars, you know, and I no. know people aren't either. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like, it, I, yeah, a lot of a lot of people like love watching it and yeah. like seeing it, but I mean, you got to take it for a grain of salt when that yeah, stuff exactly. happens. Like, I don't, yeah, there's always going to be, you know, I, like stuff like, I don't know, a few years ago, like Blade Runner 2049, mm-hmm. like, I know I love those films like that. I love mm. so many different films. I don't mm-hmm. have like a type of film I like, yeah. like so many out there. Um, that like, the old films get like snubbed, right? So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it, it's yeah. it's just one part of a piece of a puzzle sure. of the of yeah. the general industry that. Well, yeah, still I, needs a lot of work. <laughs> still needs a lot of work, but I mean, it's definitely on the rise, right? Mm. Like, I mean, it's good. Like, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's another film like Bombshell coming out. I yeah, I saw that. Yeah, is it good? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I really liked it, but it definitely is not critical of the fact that they do portray these very conservative women as like saving, you know, other women from bad people, yeah. which I think is a bit of a non-critical viewpoint to have. Like, yeah. and I think Megan Kelly, who was the anchor, um, yeah. who was really like trodden on by Trump, deserves to kind of be put in such a nice light. Right. And okay. they don't really touch on that fact that these people who have issues like that could be dealt with through a nicer lens are still attacking other women for the same thing you know what i mean right because i don't i don't know much about um i don't know the nitty-gritty aspects to yeah. the storyline and stuff but um so is it essentially they is it all like fiction is it all like uh real to the what actually happened or is it like dramatized reckon i i mean Everything's dramatized. Okay. Obviously, yeah, yeah. But is it but like... It is about the real-life events. How yeah. much is made matter. up? I don't know. Yeah. But do you, when you, do you want to get into... What type of, like... What type of AC roles do you want to get into? Do you want to get into, like, the commercial stuff or, like, the feature films or shorts well, or anything you're passionate about? When I started AC stuff, yeah. I was doing more dramas, so, like, TV shows, and then I got onto a couple of films, so... The biggest film I did, like, full-time was Palm Beach, mm-hmm. uh, so which Bonnie Elliott shot that, and Lovely. it had Sam Neill and Brian Brown produced it, uh, Rachel Ward directed it, so, like, good Australian cast were yeah, in that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and then after that, I kind of have slipped into TVC world, which has its ups and downs. Mm. I think TVCs are definitely where the... Uh, <laughs> The male circles appear a lot more, probably because right. there's a lot more money in it. Yeah. And but on the plus side for me, it means that I'm not working for three months straight with literally no life, and I can kind of just work a couple of days a week. And through that, I've now started to be able to go back to working on more creative projects for myself. Yeah, talk to me about those creative projects. So yes. you do like uh, what, photography, or yeah. do you sell stuff on the side, or what do you do? Yeah, so right now I'm working on my art show, which is coming up on the 7th of February at Down Under Space. Please okay, <laughs> lovely. I'll put in the show notes if there's anything online that yeah. I can check it out. It's yeah. uh, something I've been working on. <gasps> it was you. It was me, that's right. Um, Keep going. <laughs> so it's 
uh, just a lot of my photography, but I kind of focused it on architecture with an asterisk. I definitely consider them more fine art prints. Uh, and I'm kind of just playing with perspective and context and framing and more making it so they just look like geometric shapes and taking out any semblance of what they could be. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, where did you get the idea from to do it? <laughs> well, I've kind of always been interested in the aesthetic of it. Yeah. And I took a bunch of photos for an art project back when I was at uni. And I remember like really enjoying the process of it and I kind of just revisited that idea and then expanded on it and refined mm. what I was kind of going for over the last four months. So, and is it um, physical? Like do you make copies of it when you're done? Or? Yeah, so I've, I've got the prints now. So they're yeah. all like, you know, single prints. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Which I'll show yeah, in for the sure. space. And they're for sale? Yes. Oh, yeah, lovely. Um, who have you done it before? Or is this is your first time. This is my first batch. Oh, lovely. Very okay. Well, good luck. All Thank the best, because um, I'm kind of interested to see um, the audience you bring out from it. You know, yeah. like the type of people that you attract, and that would, that would help you in the future, right? Yeah. Like, when you see the type of people that buy it more or like it, yeah, you know, that might like give you a good understanding on yeah. you know your your reach or your demographic. Yeah. Right. It's it's definitely been really rewarding to go here's something physical I made because mm. I think especially in film you post a lot of things into the ether of the yep. internet to never be seen again yeah and now I'm like I have these physical prints that you can look at man there is something and, beautiful about the physical and and you know I mean by in the sense that someone could have my work in their place yep. I think is really rewarding to think about that I 100% agree. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just feel that, yeah, we post stuff on Instagram and YouTube and stuff, and mm. it just feels like it's not it's not real, almost like it's yeah. just up there and it's just, you know, it's... But then when you have it physically in your hand, like when you take a Polaroid, I don't yeah. know why, but Polaroid, holding a Polaroid of your friends is yeah. like amazing. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. But you can take just an equal amount, even mm. better photo, mm -hmm. but if it's on your phone, it's like, oh, mm. okay. Like scroll to the next one or like yeah, scroll yeah. up and down. So I mean, that's why like for wedding films, we will send um, our couples do wedding film in like a custom wooden timber box. Oh, nice. Yeah. How fancy. Um, it's a wooden USB that they can plug in. Just because yeah. it feels like more genuine and authentic. They're yeah. just being, oh, here's a link, you know. Yeah. He's like, oh, like, okay, it's so a link to YouTube. It's like, you know, I don't know. I feel like you're right, though. Like having the physical copies, making something, um, you know, storing it and stuff, that would definitely, that would definitely be like a lot more, um, uh, just... Just more like uh, people enjoy that a lot more. Yeah. Right? Um, so I mean, where where do you go from that? Um, so you do that, and then is that something you want to go down the lines of? Or is this like just a side thing you're doing, and then it's just a creative release or my so essentially my vision, my yeah. 2020 vision. 2020 vision is I just want to start exploring all the kind of different facets of what I'm interested in. Yeah. So I want to really hone in on my photography a lot more. Yeah. I also kind of have a headshot business that I've been doing that's actually had some mild success so that's nice and at the same time I'm really interested in in fine art kind of photography as well as uh, portrait and fashion photography I feel like those are my two things I'm really drawn to and I just want to try and do as much of that as I can and see where that leads me. Mm. Uh, I also want to try and get back into writing. I was like an avid writer when I was a teenager. And I, I what, won. What type of writing? So originally it was like just fiction. And then I kind of moved into uh, screenplays once yeah. I realized film was fun. Yeah, great. And Man, talk like, to me about the screenplay stuff. How, how, was, how, how do you find writing? Like, do you still write or? Are you still trying to get into it? I'm just, Have you written a screenplay? Or? I'm starting to write again. Yeah. So like I'm just writing a bunch of ideas. I'd love to just kind of write and direct a short film this year as well, just as another thing that I can say I've done and yeah. see where that leads me. And, you know, now that I'm a little bit older and more, I don't know, had a few more years of experience under my belt, yeah. see where that'll take me. Uh, but, 
you know, I think everyone who's interested in film, when they're, when they're young, they make a whole bunch of short films yeah. and they see where that gets them. For sure. And I remember, like, I won a couple of, like, competitions, like, for my, like, writing of the scripts. I can tell, show you, like, the production quality was very bad. But it's nice that someone at least liked the dialogue. I know, I know. <laughs> that's great. I mean, I mean, that's the thing. If you have, like, a screenplay that just has great story, mm. people, like, are willing to forgive any, like, technical, <laughs> technical things. Yeah. Know? Um, cause I mean, I'm trying to, I want to get into writing a lot more now and yeah. I, I don't know, like, I just, I think I just still find it like hard, like you, I yeah. do a lot of thinking, yeah. but I never do any like physical writing, you right. know? Yeah. Uh, cause I, I think I just, I, I want it, I want it to just be nice straight away, but mm -hmm. that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, all the best writers say that like, you have to be willing to like write poorly you know, mm -hmm. and then from you there do. you can have something. But if you try to get something amazing straight away, like yep. you never, you get, you're never going to do it. Yeah. You pretty much need to smash out, at least in my experience, smash out the worst thing you've ever written in your life and uh, then edit, yeah. edit, 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 edit. That is, yeah, man. Like it's, I mean, that's the hardest part. Cause yeah, you, you, you gotta like, um, what is it? Like put away your pride and like, you gotta be just like put away your ego. And yeah. uh, I, I guess, you know, you don't have to show anyone <laughs> just, just write it and like yeah. for your own, for your own draw. And yeah. then, um, you can, yeah, edit it away. Yeah. But that's true. Like, but if you don't have anything on a piece of paper, you can't, you, you can't like make a blank piece of paper better. Mm. Right. But you can make like, you know, a piece of, you can make it better if you have like it written down. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, does that, so I mean, it's, that's very different from your, like your AC stuff. Like, I know. It's, I mean, do you, because, yeah, I mean, when you go into AC, um, do, do you ever like talk to your directors or like is a screenwriter ever on set? Do you ever like network with, how's your networking like with that, you know? Or do you just, it's, do you have to like do your job and? It, I would say like, there is definitely a benefit to being on set because especially I work with so many different DPs all the time mm. and I've definitely become like, you know, friends with some of them or at least like I feel quite comfortable asking some of them questions and I think I've like learned a lot from some of those DPs as well. Plus just observing the way people work is really yeah. invaluable and you see how different types of directors will, will direct actors and what kind of notes they give or the way they give yeah, them or yeah. how they like to run a set. Absolutely. And you have different ways DPs like to light the same kind of shot, but they'll use different equipment and, you know, they'll speak to their gaffers in different ways. And I think all of that's, like, really important to kind of see. Yeah. Um, what What's one thing you've learned or, like, what's one of the hardest things... To learn about being an AC on set or just in general that, you know, when you're starting out. Is there anything that you learned on the job, you know, is, whether it's like, you know, or is it just every camera is kind of different or like, you know. I think the gear is one thing, yeah. which just depends how techy you are. Yeah, like is there a certain like, oh, we have to do a crane shot now. It's like, damn, like this is the this is the shot I hate the least, or you know, don't want. Or is it? You don't, no, you don't want I mean that. Look, everything has its own kind of set of yeah things to do. I'd actually say the one thing that's the most important in learning to be a good AC is actually your personality and your ability to kind of talk to other people in the correct way. Mm. Which doesn't mean like stifle everyone, um, but it is such a hierarchy, and you do need to like swallow your ego when you get yelled at for doing the wrong thing. You do need to like learn to take a hit, mm. and you do need to be like, you know, someone goes jump and you go how high. Like you really just need to be open to whatever is thrown at you. That makes sense um, for sure. I think it's just. I think you're dead on when you say it's just a personality in terms of because I mean anyone can learn like technical right it's, like it's some people are amazingly technical but man are they a brick wall <laughs> or yeah. it's like they just have no you need people skills it's For a sure. it's a collaborative environment you need yeah. to learn you how to talk to, to people yeah talk to people be nice to people yeah if, especially if you're talking to a production manager on the phone because shit's hit the fan and they need to suddenly spend another couple of thousand dollars because of you 
you need to be nice. Mm. You need to learn how to butter people up. <laughs> I know I'll, I've definitely um, had a set and, you know, I've had to go with one person or the other for like just simple things like a sound operator, you know, like anyone mm. can do a sound, but um, I've like, I've chosen someone purely just based on like their personality. Um, yeah. And just like, you know, I think I, I, someone came in to the front and, you know, a good friend of mine, Cameron Gobert, mm -hmm. um, who hires a lot and everything. And I just was chatting to him and I just loved mm. the way he was passionate about it. And mm. like he was chatting about his event videography and weddings and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just asked him, man, like, do you ever want to, I'm doing a film in a few weeks or something. Like, would you like to come on board and like be my AC and stuff? Mm -hmm. I had no idea his work. I didn't check out his work. Yeah. I, I had no idea technically how much he knew or anything. Yeah. But I just got the vibe just straight up from his, the way he spoke and the way like he was able to, you know, have a good like um, personality, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I've, I've definitely chosen I've, and I've been with friends and I've got my friends on board for film sets just purely based on like their passion and their ethos, you know. For because, sure. Because, yeah, and, and then, you know, you can teach people like, okay, this is how you hold a boom up, this is how you unscrew, like, a, oh, this is what button you press, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think you're definitely right. Yeah, and I especially, like, attribute that to one of the reasons why, you know, I'm doing what I do now. It's like, I felt like I have at least some, some skills to be able to go up to people and go, hi, what can I do for you? Like, I have a great customer service voice. Do you want a coffee? What can I get you? It's all okay. That, that yeah, you know? the customer service voice. I do that all the front. I don't know why, but when I pick up the phone, it's like, I have like a high pitched voice. Like, this is the front, Johnny speaking. It's like, why do I do that? Yeah. Like, I, I, you yeah. know, it's like, okay, here's yeah. the weird. You know, you just need to not make enemies of anyone. Like, even if they're really giving you a rough time yeah it's all right man it's all good don't get angry yeah. like well i mean i'm chill yeah 100%. you could be dying inside but usually when like you know i'm dying inside is when i just can't stop laughing okay <laughs> like i'll be like oh my god everything is going to shit that's good ha -ha. to know if i ever have you as a you know, second ac or something and you don't you just keep laughing i'll, I'll take that advice on yeah. board um but what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, putting yourself in their person's shoes, I guess, is the easiest way to look mm. at it. I mean, if like a director or someone is like yelling at you, I guess it's good to stop and think, okay, why is he yelling at me? Yeah, exactly. I guess because, you know, this project means a lot to him. Yeah. He's on a time budget. He's yeah, losing exactly. $500 an hour or something. Yeah. Like, you know, he just wants to get the shot. You know, you, you have no idea. Yeah. Like, you know, they could be having something personal going on in their life, you know? Yeah. I think the, the best thing to do is, again, like once you've been on set and you know how it all works, you learn when to stay away mm -hmm. or you know when to butter up. Mm. And it's like, it's just kind of a bit of a dance. And that's also part of your job you know it's it's to be the, the friendly face to never be upset like the people on you know on top of you like for me first AC and DP like they rely on someone to just be a happy nice face that they can not feel pressured by as well right yeah I mean I'm just thinking like for DP for directors for the production designers mm -hmm. like they already have so much that they have to like address for the executives and stuff for sure they don't they would hate to get pushed back from their own crew exactly that's know? like the worst thing you can do like they just they want a crew that's like on board and yeah. like motivated and down to do stuff and they already have so much thinking and if they were and then you know they start pushing back at them it's like a lot of like a lot more stress that they don't need yeah 100 you know, percent um i was gonna say what was one thing you have um What's like one experience or a couple of experiences that come to mind on a film set that you've had that you just learn a lot from or you have kind of grown in? Um, is there anything that like hit you and they give you a big realization, you know, that this is how, that moving forward, this is how I'm going to do things or um, big lesson learned? I don't know if anything comes to mind immediately because it is definitely just a gradual. It's a gradual thing for you, you reckon? Thing, it was, yeah. There was, no, there was no just like one moment where it kind of just like something clicked. I think after Palm Beach, which was 2018, yeah, mid mid 2018. I think after that because it was definitely like a a high budget ish movie, mm -hmm. but it was like there were just a lot of 
technicalities that happened on that movie. That's all I'll say. But after that movie <laughs> is is after that movie, I definitely like reevaluated the way like I worked as a second AC, and I was like, which was definitely my just let it wash all over moment. <laughs> like mm. if anything goes wrong, if someone wants me to do something, doesn't matter. Just mm. let it go. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you do have to like just really learn how to do that. But I think other moments, like I did a, a low, low budget movie, like really early on in my uh, career, which was, I did as an attachment for free, by the way. And that was also like another moment of learning because you're really like challenged and you don't know what you're doing, but you're just trying everything you can to just make it work, mm. even though you're generally shooting in the dark. Yeah. What have you ever been on a set and you've you feel like you uh, I mean this is like a mm. bit um, like an ego thing but like have you ever feel like you know more than the DP or like you feel like you've no no <laughs> um, also I wouldn't admit it even if I did yeah true okay <laughs> but that's good. actually no I don't think so I think all the DPs I've worked with have been fantastic awesome and amazing and Great. also here's the thing. I originally thought I wanted to be D be a DP, and then I was like, lighting's really hard. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you have to, I guess with DP, you're thinking about everything from the composition and the camera, all the way to like the lens choice, For sure. all the way to the lighting, yeah. all the way to you know the the lighting, the background. Yeah. Like how much how much in focus you want to be, yep. how shallow of a depth. Yep. Like it's, it's not just, yeah, there's so many things, right? Yeah. And then you have to like take that on the board with the director's vision and yep. they have to make sure it looks the same across the entire film. Yeah. You know? A like, DP yeah. is a really interesting role because you work so close with the director who has their vision and the way they want to shoot things. But as a DP, you also have to shoot the shot you think is the best way to support that vision of the director. Mm -hmm. And there is that fine line you have to, to kind of walk across on whether you're going, you know, over the, the director to get the shot you want or whether you should do what the director wants. So it is like another kind of political role. And on top of that, you know, if you want the shot you want, it's going to take time. The AD is yelling at you, okay, but I want to do this. So there's like so many things that go on. Yeah, as well. and, and it's and, yeah, yeah, it's it's so hard to to kind of understand where one role begins and one ends, right? Well, I I just think I mean how much of uh, how much of the production design goes into like what the DP does, like in terms of mm. do you have many actors in the background or you know the cast and everything from the costume to mm. the makeup, you know, like that. You know, if the makeup is like oily, it doesn't matter how soft you make it, like the skin's gonna look like oily in the skin, you know? Like yeah. everything from the like little things, and then I mean, I just feel like it all kind of goes on top of each other almost, like in yeah. terms of what the director has, the actors, yeah. the production design. The well, I guess that's where choice. a really good director comes in because they yeah. should be the ones that can spot all those things and bring it all together. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, like, I know a DP will be like, Oh, can I tell that extra to do this or move over there? Oh, can you just step a little to the right? You know, like, and I think that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's I think part of part yeah. of getting the correct shot. Yeah, I mean, like th that's why I said I I work really well with um l like a, a you know a few DPs I work with, but I mean. Like one thing is like, let's say you have like a scene of like mm -hmm. a people sitting there or like talking or something, mm -hmm. you know, you direct the actors, you get the idea what they want. And mm -hmm. then the DP might come in and just shift them to the left a bit or yeah. like tell them, oh, okay. Like, you know, if we just turn them this way, it, it, the light hits them a lot better. Yeah. You know, that's absolutely amazing. That's yeah. great. That's why you hired them. Yeah. But a lot of, I feel like a lot of directors and I don't know if this happens too much, but then they feel, oh, like you can't do that. Like. I'm the director. It's like no, like what? Yeah. Like this is let, let him do his job. Let the, yeah. they get this. He's trying to make it better for you. Yeah. Um, like yeah, it's just like, honestly, like being okay and collaborating and you know, um, having trust in your your team, you know, to to do well. Mm. Um, do you have any tips on uh, for any people acing at the moment or getting into it that you can that you can give? Like I mean, or that you've you've learned? Um, 
that you go and set with? Do you have like a little notes that like you remind yourself with? I don't know. <laughs> Email as many people as you can. You never know who has an opportunity for you. It's what I do. I do yeah. my pity rounds every couple of months going, please hire me. I'm available. Uh, through, you know, Oscar and Top Text, yeah. we're all listed. You know, it's actually not that hard to find us. Um, don't, well, yeah. you know, act like you know what's going on. Just be there to ingest the information, observe, and in, only if appropriate, <laughs> ask questions. Uh, okay. You know, and if you don't know what something is, ask. There is nothing more frustrating than an attachment going, often trying to find something they don't know what they're looking for, then coming back 10 minutes later empty handed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say on how much, um, how much research you do prior, like, what do you, like, do you do any, like, just, what do you do? Do you watch videos or do you just, like, look Not up at tutorials? Not at this point. Or, no. I feel like, I, you know, we use the same three cameras. <laughs> it's either an Ari, a Red, or a Sony Venice, and sometimes some other random camera. But I feel like at this point, if you understand how one camera works, it's just finding whatever you're looking for on the menu. Mm. And I've kind of been in working with so many cameras, I don't really feel like I need to brush up on my skills. Yeah, do you work for S's at all? Pardon? S's, S minis, no? Not really. Okay, interesting. Um, no, it's mostly minis, yeah. I'd say. And then sometimes reds, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you're, you're, an, you're an Ari person? You like the Alexas? As far as an assistant, yes. Do, um, I also just like, put, like everything to it, like the skin color, like the way the way it operates, the it's less aesthetics and more into intuitiveness. Of like yeah. The, just, the... And I find reds have a lot of bugs. I've never worked with a red that isn't buggy really? or wanted to break on you more Dang. or is unreliable. Especially if you're shooting out like in the desert or something. Or their you don't menus want to. make no sense. Really? Or you're like, okay, where's that one thing in the menu? Man, they make but all the ads and commercials you see make it look so simple. <laughs> like someone just like presses a button yeah, and it's simple. like. Yeah. Um, you know, you definitely have opinions <laughs> on like what your favorite is. I think Ari just has the money and the time that they know yeah. that their audience of buyers is yeah. just the top tier people who can afford these kind of cameras. So um, yeah. they know ex they know they're being used by assistants. They know they're being used by three people at the same time. Mm. So they're designed that way. Great. And what do you think of like the 8K raw function and all those little things compared to like the resolution that Ari gives? Do you think it makes a difference? Do you always shoot or want to shoot like in a 4K or? Personally, I don't care. Okay. I think this topic really bores me. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. I, even though I work in a technical role, there are so many technical things I don't care about. Yeah, great. Like... <laughs> and it's really funny when you have like some people who are massive tech heads and they're just so obsessed with what the statistics are and what this does. And I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter. If the DP knows how to light, the DP knows how to light and it's going to look good. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, I mean, it's, it's so technical. There's no, there's no limit to how technical you want to go. Yeah. Like, people can go all the way down to, like, I don't know, with light, there's, like, the, the lumens and the fall off and mm -hmm. the, the camera's, like, the bit rate, then, yeah. you know. I and... think, honestly, the only thing you should care about is the sensor. You yeah. know, the, and people usually just choose, at least in, you know, from my experience, the resolution just depends on what you're shooting. You know, if you're shooting a Netflix show, well, we know it needs to be at least 4K. If we're shooting a broadcast thing, it doesn't need to be more than 3.2K unless you're doing VFX, then maybe you want to do RAW. So well, all of those things are just dependent on what you're shooting and where it's going. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, with Ari Alexa Mini, it's like, mm. it, 3.2k right that's the highest it can go or can it go higher in resolution it's got a uh, ultra hd which is like fake 4k so it's not 4k yeah. but it's close because i know that for netflix i've heard in the past mm. that there have been some amazing tv shows and uh, like the filmmakers had to like yeah they shot on red yeah but, yeah, but also like they shot it on minis, right? And they had to like make a special request to Netflix yes. to ask if they can yeah. film because Netflix were like, no, it's not 4K. Yeah. It's like what? Yeah. But well, it's that's Ari... pretty much why they have the LFs yeah. now because they they're 4K. 
Just to, for uh, streaming friendly kind of thing. Yeah, and like the Sony Venice as well shoots, you know, 4K and above. So unfortunately that has become part of the conversation because streaming services demand it. Yeah, but once, I mean, once, it's just once it's either 4K or not, then once you get there, like that should be it, right? Or, yeah, I mean, the thing is no one's, Unless you have a 4K monitor, it doesn't matter. You're watching in a HD. I know. <laughs> like, I'm watching probably my Netflix on my shitty TV in 720. It's a bad TV. Like, yeah. the resolution doesn't matter. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, and then do you, what about just things like the colours? I mean, do you find the colours change a lot if you... Oh, for sure. Yeah? Um, that's definitely, I think, like, you'll, you'll see... The best DPs are constantly testing. Like you need so much dedication yeah. to test the different color spaces to see what tones look like what. Like, I mean, famously we know like Sony skin tones kind of have a green cast to them. Yeah. Like I, with skin tones are so sure. difficult to kind of capture because they're so like so many pores, but you don't want them to be too porous. Like there's a lot of texture. There's a lot of like different color, like just, you know, here but it's all very small. Mm. So there's like a lot of technology that goes into it. And, you know, it just depends what look you're going for. Maybe you're using a different kind of lot that could change the look. I mean, obviously I do like Ari. I think they have the best skin tones, but you know, obviously that is once you get into the big leagues and you're using Aries for a massive full-scale production. Well, I mean, there is a reason why most of the films, you know, that win at the Academy and stuff, they all mm -hmm. just seem to be simply shot on Aries. Yeah. Um, the, I think barely, yeah. barely on the reds. And... Well, I, I went to a, um, a little workshop with when they brought out the LFs that Sean Dooley, who is the sales manager at Aries in Australia, he ran that. And it was really interesting, actually, because I was a bit of a of an LF hater to begin with. And I was like, what's the point of this? Right. I don't, I don't yeah. care. And then it actually really changes the look of it. And he was talking about how, uh, because it's, it's pretty much two sensors stitched together. So it's double the size of a normal camera. Okay. Or at least of their range. Yeah. Uh, but now you've actually got the lens choices are different. So I think it's like a 48 mil, like they have a 48 mil lens because it actually works out to be like a 35 mil from my memory. I could be the other way around, but yeah. So they, it's, it's kind of has the opposite effect of an anamorphic. Yeah. And then they can do like a 14 mil on a camera and it looks kind of totally flat. Like there's no fish eyeing as well as the fact that in all the lenses, you're getting way more depth in the background and you know, that just changing the look totally. As well as the fact like they've improved like the skin tones, which I thought was really cool and like discussing just like how you can kind of capture pores without it looking bad. And like, I really liked that. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is really interesting. And I think you see like the comparison videos, you know, online or that kind of jazz on YouTube mm. and stuff on these cameras. And I guess, I don't know, I've, I've shot with the Alexa Mini. Mm -hmm. And I've shot with just the A7S, mm -hmm. and I've realised, I guess, I I lean more towards like lighting and the production design mm -hmm. um, and the composition and the lens choice. That's what makes a difference. Because mm -hmm. um, I mean, I shot stuff with Lex, Lex Mini, and it looks great. Mm -hmm. but I've also shot stuff with just the A7S, mm -hmm. and I mean, if you put it side by side, you can't make the argument they look just as good as the other. You know? Yeah. So I mean, it's it all depends on a little a few things, but obviously, like yeah, when you're shooting like. If you're shooting for like the movies and stuff, yeah, you want it to be, yeah, whatever, like the highest sensor. And Pretty much the only leg up you have, like the reason you'd want to shoot on it, is when you have the gear that you need to put on it. Like it just has the ports to start with. Like if you want to put your WCU4 on it, and you want to put your Teradex on it, and then you want to put your sound crap on it, yeah, uh, and and everything else that goes on this thing, yeah, and you know you have people on it, and there might be a reason you're using. Harry Raw or something for the file types, maybe. Yeah. You know, or you're used to that camera. Yeah. But again, like. It's yeah, and it's also, I guess little things like if you want to like, like be pulling focus, like when you're doing a push in, or mm -hmm. like 
Um, I know in Little Women, you've seen mm -hmm. it, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't, this isn't giving away any spoilers, I hope not, but if it is, a spoiler. Um, like there's a shot where the camera starts, it starts out yeah. in the exterior and goes into the house and they do an yeah. aperture change, like when they go into the house. Yeah. Um, and I guess, yeah, you need, you need the setup yeah. and you need... Well, we do that all the time. Yeah. I haven't, I've never done an aperture change because, I mean, well, you need a, is it, is, it, is, it a, is it a pretty big setup to do the aperture change? It's actually really funny how it's not. Yeah. So you usually just throw me like another like uh, WC4 yeah, yeah. or SXU and be like, right? all right, I'll we're going it. from 2.8 to 4. <laughs> yeah. So but what you do... If you get it at the exact moment, they walk into the house or into a dark place. Yeah, you just literally watch it on the screen and go, damn, hope the timing was right. And DP's like, that was shit, do it again. <laughs> like, well, I tried. And it's like, huh. Well, sometimes yeah. like the DP will do it, you know, if they're on the screen. Because sometimes, like, when a DP is operating, if mm. they're not, they'll do it. Yeah. But it's, it's not even, it's so low tech is the funniest thing. Yeah. And you, you, just, you just have another monitor on the aperture ring. That's awesome. Uh, sorry, not a monitor, another motor on the aperture ring. Yeah. No, it's so, it's so interesting um, because, I mean, when you watch the movie and you see, like, because I guess I watch with a technical eye. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, people watching it, just the audience, just see, oh, it's the camera going into the house, and that's yeah. it. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, damn, like, there's a lot that goes into that in a way. Yeah. Like, they go out, they have to start on this, and then they're doing an aperture change mid-shot, and, yeah. you know, the guy, the focus puller is making sure he's pulling focus, like, the next character. Yeah. And you can tell they've done such a great job when just the regular audience, like, don't notice those things, you know? Like, yeah. it's so smoothly yeah. transitioned across. Because, I mean, it's, a, it's like pretty clear as well because like, the outside is all like nicely exposed and the mm -hmm. inside's super dark. Yeah. And then they go inside and it's, and it's like, like it's, and then bright. the outside window you can see it's like overexposed. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> um, have you ever done a big stuff up on a set that you just like, oh no. I hope not. <laughs> no. Yeah, you, you never dropped a $50,000 lens or anything. Hells no, but I have seen it happen uh -huh. and like, I wanted to die and it was like really early. it was like my first year of um, shooting uh, not shoot sorry it was my first year on a film set like a, on a on a movie for the yeah. full time and I remember we had a daily come in to replace the other loader and then they literally did that thing where they closed the case and didn't latch it and forgot about it then picked it up and then Literally, the director, the producer, the DP were all standing there, and he picks it up, and all the ones just go, Flunk. Oh. and I was just like, ah. That's the biggest thing. You gotta like close Pelican cases. Like you gotta, like if it's yeah. if it's if it's closed, in in it should be the clicks in as well. Like it, you should never. Yeah. Yeah. It, no. Those are another like little things you just have to remember. You get little systems for yourself. Like yeah. You know, I've never been. I have to this day. Hope it doesn't change. Haven't screwed up any card changes. Haven't dropped a lens. That's all I can ask for well, in my life. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, in a way, I feel like if that was going to happen to you, it would have already happened by now. Like yeah, in the first like I literally years, have right? this hand method and I'll hold like fresh card. I take like exposed behind back, give new card. And that's how I do it. Like, and you, and yeah, I just, you never, yeah, you never they don't, up. they don't meet each other. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, Cause I mean, yeah, even in the rental house, like it's just little things like, hey, set up a C stand, how yeah. you, um, you know, diffuse like a knife blade, yeah. like all these little things. I mean, you're not gonna know when you start. No one's mm -hmm. expecting you to know it. And yeah. you're gonna make, you always be humble enough to like make those mistakes early. Yeah. Um, and hopefully it's like nothing's gonna cost you a job. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know you feel like this, but you probably feel pretty well, like pretty confident on the set now, right? If you go into it. Like I'd you, say so. You, yeah, you know, yeah. you know what you're doing. Yeah. Wrangling, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. But wrangling is it a different game? Wrangling, like how much are you doing triple backups? It's like a double backup, or. Um. No. <laughs> Sorry, there's oh, a fly man, going in my chair. Ah, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Wrangling's its own thing, but I wouldn't say it's really that complicated. It's 
because it's just data, you know. And people, pe wrangles, some wrangles get paid a lot of money. You know? I know. <laughs> I have, I have a kit. Like I've got a little box, and I've got my laptop in. And nice. I have my dongle city. I call it. <laughs> and I've got like just a thousand dongles because I've got the USB C oh, laptop. Oh yeah, just being completely ready but for anything. Yeah. I really only because I do commercials, so you wrangle quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but if you're on a film, you get a DIT, or it's going to straight to the post house, depending on what they're doing. So then you don't really need to do that because you have so many other jobs to do. It's better to have another person dedicated to that and doing mm -hmm. all the QC checks. Absolutely. When you're on a commercial, they give you a card, you just chuck it on the laptop, two backups, you know, a master and a backup, and that's about it. And you just check that it's all good. Yeah. No, great. Yeah, no, but no, that's good. it's, I think the only thing is just double checking that nothing has gone wrong, so you can kind of pray for. Is there any um, actual system or software you use that you... I use Shotput Pro, yeah. which I think most people do use. It's just a checksum software program. So you just load up the card through the program and then it'll double check there's been no corruption um, and do like a little checksum for you. And do you, um, is it like a, do you pay per month for that or is it a subscription thing? Or? No, it's like 200 bucks outright, yeah. which pays itself pretty quickly. And is it update over time? Is like yeah. yeah, yeah, like it's actually, it's pretty good. So what does it do exactly? You just make sure everything you transfer to the card is on there kind of thing? Or? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally just putting it on drives. So, and that's, <laughs> so what's that over me just like copying from 1 to 98, you know, just <laughs> doing that across? I mean... I, I would never just copy things, like, yeah. you definitely want to use the checksum program because, okay. you know, if anything yeah. goes wrong, you need to be like, guys, uh, and I can just tell you immediately. Yeah, you know that one shot? Yeah, I didn't copy it properly that, uh, you know, where we had the fire and the explosion, yeah. The that, other that thing as well really is lost. it's actually really important for you in case post comes back and they go, oh, this is missing and I'll be like, well, here's the checksum. I did my job as best as I could, so don't blame that's, me. That's a good idea. You yeah. Know? So like not it's to say back, like yeah. nothing's my fault, but it is an insurance for you. That's good. If you're not using that, yeah. then they'll be like, why didn't you do a checksum? So it's No no. Good yeah. point. That's that's a good point. Yeah. Um, like it's also like a saving yourself legally and um yeah, because you don't, because a lot of people like will be easy to point a finger or like a blame or something. Yeah. So, so the checksum like gives you like saying it's all checked or like, yeah, yeah like, this yeah, is... like all the files are there. This is the type of files. This is what they look like. There yeah, great. Corruption. And do you like screenshot that and say, hey, like, look, like this checksum said, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Like, you know, um, it must be somewhere else or something. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Claudia, is there anything else you want to say before you wrap up um, that we, you thought we want to touch on or anything you just need to check, you know, talk about or anything? I don't know. This has been a blur. Please come to my art show. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say again? Actually, when is your art show? I'll put it in the show notes. It's the 7th of February, 5 to 10 p.m., free entry, one night only at Down Under Space, which is underneath Frida's in Redfern. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Claudia, thank you for coming on. It's thank been you for an absolute me. pleasure. Um, look forward to it. Have yes. a great year. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> I know it's like so awkward when you finish the podcast because you're still here and you're saying bye. But bye. It makes sense when you come in person and everything like that.